Do you remember how it was when you first got saved? Like that fire, that passion, that joy that you first had when you first gave your life to the Lord? What happened to that? Are you one of those that have let your love for the Lord kind of dwindle down and just take the background? Have you gotten so used to being in God's presence and being a child of his that you take it for granted now? Uh, listen to this Bible verse and tell me if this doesn't speak to you. This is Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. This is uh, the book of Revelation where um, Jesus is talking to all the different churches. And this church uh, is Ephesus in particular. Let me give you a little bit more context as to what is actually going on here. And then I will go back into these uh, video top or to the topics of this video. So this verse is interpreted in two different ways. One is that the church has lost its early love for Christ, which is kind of how I opened the video. And the second is that the church has lost their love for one another and that in order to revive that love, they have to go back to doing the good work they did for one another before. And I think both of these apply. Uh, and just as many others do as well. But here's the thing, guys. When we get saved, we're on fire for the Lord. We have this drive, this passion that we just want to go out and tell everybody about it. You know, we start reading, listening to worship music, um, reading books that are not the Bible about God that uh, other you know pastors and teachers have uh, written. And we do all this and try to acquire all this knowledge and do everything to get closer to God. And we pray and then after a while, you know, we get saved and, you know, we start going through the motions. Some days we don't read our Bible. Some days we don't want to go to church. Instead of listening to a worship song, we don't listen to any music at all. You know, um, these things all can lead to us becoming stagnant. And then not only that, we have Satan coming, trying to steal, kill and destroy. He wants to steal the word of God from us. He wants to kill our faith. He wants to destroy our walk with the Lord. He doesn't want anything good. He doesn't want us to be close to God. He doesn't care if we follow God. As long as he can keep us sinning while we do it, that's all that matters to him. Yeah, he would love for us to not worship the Lord at all. But if we do, then he can at least try to get some of us to continue to sin. And I think that when we look at our relationship with Jesus the way it was when we first started, we can rekindle that flame. We can rekindle that fire that has died down. It's kind of like a relationship or a marriage that is, you know, kind of started to stagnate. The the saying is never stop dating. Well, we are the bride of Christ. So we're to never stop dating Jesus, so to speak. And please don't make this weird, guys. Just listen to the terminology and apply it. Um, we're to never stop chasing after God because he's never going to stop chasing after us. We're to never stop chasing after Jesus because he won't stop chasing after us. He's there. He's just waiting for us to be in alignment with him. He's waiting for us to call on him. He's waiting for us to pray to him. The more we pray to the Father, the deeper our relationship with him will, will get. And it's like with the Bible. Faith without works is dead, right? Is what the Bible says. And so how do you increase your faith? Well, number one, by reading the Bible, because this is how our father talks to us. This is how the parent corrects the child. God is our father. And if you don't know what he wants because you don't read the word or you don't pray to him, how are you going to hear from him? Then when you get the faith from reading the word, you also have faith that is increased by doing works for one another. So say your brother or your, your sister in Christ needs you and you come through and you're able to provide a, a need for them that's doing a work for the kingdom. And then you see the blessing that it bestows upon this person and that increases your faith. Faith without works is dead, right? So how are people gonna go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations? How are those gonna hear if no one ever goes to tell them? Matthew verse nine or Matthew chapter nine, verse 37 says, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. How are we going to go out there and tell the people about Jesus if nobody's going to go do the work? How are people going to get saved if no one's going to do the work? So a lot of people are like, oh, brother, it works. You don't need to work your way into heaven. You don't need to work your way into heaven. You're already saved by faith. 
and grace and what Jesus did on the cross. That's great, right? But are you just going to be selfish and be lazy and just keep the gift all to yourself? Or are you going to go tell your neighbor because you got a really great deal? I talk about this all the time uh, in my personal life and my pastor says it on stage, which is funny because he's the one that did this. He actually did it. When you get a good deal on something, you call someone and you tell them, hey, I got this really great item for this really great price. You should go get one, too. And my pastor actually did that. He called me when a farm supply store uh, next to our church, next door to our church, was having Carhartt jackets on sale for 30 bucks. And um, I went over there and I bought a whole bunch of them for, you know, 30 bucks a piece. I have yet to come find that those Carhartt, deal, those Carhartt jackets were on sale for $30 ever again. But what did I do? I got right on Instagram and I told everybody about it because it was such a great deal. $30 for a $150 jacket, $170 jacket. Come get them. Come get them while you can. And that's how it is with our faith. When you get saved and you feel God's goodness, you feel the forgiveness of your sins, you feel the freedom of that weight lifted off your shoulders. The burden is heavy, guys. All that sin that we walk around with, all that shame, that guilt that we walk around with, that stuff is heavy. But Jesus says, my yoke is light. I think that we can let the ways of the world start to creep in slowly, right? Little nitpicking and things like that start, you know, first it starts off with a boss that says something to you. A co-worker that's lazy at work and you got to pick up the slack. Now bitterness starts to creep in. Uh, or, you know, a girlfriend or a boyfriend that likes somebody's photos on Instagram or Facebook and now jealousy starts to creep in. Or you see someone and it just looks like they've got it all together and the grass is greener on the other side. I promise you guys, those are all tactics from the enemy to try to steal your focus away from focusing on God. We got to put God first in our life. We got to make God our first love again. We got to make being children of the Most High the biggest priority in our life. Everything else is secondary, guys. Everything else is fleeting. None of that stuff's going to last. Our relationship with the Lord comes first. And then after that, we're to love our neighbors. Mark 12, verse 30 and 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandments greater than these. This is directly out of Jesus' mouth. So the new covenant with him is these two commandments. And so if we are to be children of God, if we are to be followers of Christ, we're to love our neighbors, but most of all, we're supposed to love Jesus. We're supposed to be followers of Jesus. Get back to the heart of following the Lord. Get back to the heart of worship. Play some worship music. Fall on your knees in prayer. Repent. Repent of all the things that you've done that have had part and played a role in your stagnation. It just doesn't happen overnight. Oh, I'll read the Bible tomorrow. Oh, I'll read it the next day. Or oh, I'll go to church next week. All that procrastination leads to stagnation. Don't let that happen. Repent, fall on your knees, weep to the Lord, cry out to him. He will hear your prayer. He will answer you. And then go back to doing everything that you first did when you got saved. All the things you did when you got saved that brought you closer to God, that made you feel like your relationship was growing with him. Go back to doing all that stuff and tell me that you don't feel more on fire for the Lord. That's going to do it for this one. Catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.